Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Dana Winkle Platt. And I'm Mike Tank. A recent announcement from the Family and Social Services Administration in Indiana has several families concerned about the future. Yeah, that announcement was regarding changes to a Medicaid program that allowed parents and legal guardians of minors to be a paid caregiver for their kids. Nicole Christine met with a local mother who is concerned for what this could mean for her family. She joins us now with that mother's story. Well, Jamie O'Neill's story at its core is the story of any mother who wants what is best for her children in her family unit. She says her concern is that the state is focusing on dollar signs rather than those people whose lives are spent fighting for that best for their loved ones. Ready? Meet Colson. Do it again. When Colson was less than six months old, the course of his life changed due to what his mom, Jamie, calls a case of caregiver neglect by a babysitter. She put him in a crib and with some other things in it and he suffocated, which resulted in a traumatic brain injury. Colson spent a month recovering in Riley Children's Hospital in Indy. And when he came home, Jamie and her husband tried to care for him while both still working. Then Jamie found out about becoming an attendant caregiver, an option available through Indiana's Medicaid Aged and Disabled Waiver Program. I was reluctant to quit my, my job to do it, but I was assured by the case managers and everybody involved that like this was a permanent thing and you know this would be really beneficial to our family and I was already missing like so much work or he'd have to miss therapy or I'd miss appointments of his because I couldn't keep up. But now Indiana's Family and Social Services Administration or FSSA has announced changes to the waiver program set to take effect on July 1st that will no longer allow parents or legal guardians of a minor to provide attendant care. <laughs> News that shocked Jamie and then spurred her to action. Well, I immediately that day, within an hour or so, started a petition because I'm like, this cannot happen. This is not, not just my family, but thousands of other Hoosiers this is going to affect and have a negative impact on their lives. Jamie and other families have found a spokesperson in Tendra Duff, a community liaison with Guardian Care, a provider of attendant care services in Indiana. Tendra has seven-year-old identical twins with Down syndrome and had to quit her job when they were babies due to the strain of their appointments and other needs. Before she was connected with Guardian Care, Tendra's family was living under the conditions of a single income, and she said the ability to be a paid caregiver for her sons greatly improved their quality of life. And it puts so much more pressure off of my husband to feel like, hey, I need to make sure there's no way that I get fired because if something happens to me, how do I support my family? With the recently announced changes to the waiver program, Tendra said families are now on edge and asking questions that allude to financial crisis. Are we going to be able to afford to put food on our table? Is this going to send us into Section 8 housing? How do we apply for food stamps? According to the FSSA website, the change in programming stems from a variance of more than $900 million in state funding compared to previously anticipated expenses in relation to the Medicaid program. The website goes on to reference a structured family care service families will be able to utilize, but that program mentions intermediary agencies that receive a portion of the caregiver's compensation. Overall, Tendra says the situation leaves parents with more questions than answers. I mean, we truly want a comprehensive evaluation of the whole Medicaid program. And in the end, what does that look like? Um, we want clarity on their tailored solutions that they're offering, because right now what they're offering is not appropriate for many of our families. And for Jamie, she said she cannot imagine going back to the way her family operated before she was paid to be Colson's caregiver. He can't feed himself, he can't change himself, he can't move himself from place to place. He doesn't walk, he doesn't talk, you know, he relies on us for all of his care. Without this program, I don't know how I would keep up between uh, working and doing all of that. Therapies, appointments, medications, G-tube feedings, all of that. It would just be very, very difficult. Now, I did reach out to the FSSA for more insight into the program changes, and I'm waiting to hear back. But Representative Alan Morrison did send a statement encouraging concerned Hoosiers to participate in the public comment period regarding these changes, which ends on February 17th. You can read his full statement and much more on these changes over on our website, mywabashvalley.com.